Hello, Steve here. Like many people, when I first tried the bow drill, I failed horribly. In fact, I was so frustrated because of the fact that I didn't know why I failed. I just worked and worked and worked and worked. I spent a whole day on it, and I didn't even come close to having a fire. Lots of smoke, no fire. So because I didn't know what I did wrong, I didn't even try again for months and months. So from a beginner's perspective, I'm gonna teach you what I learned while going through that process. Lucky for me, I have a couple of good friends who work in wilderness therapy. And there are times when those guys have to make a bow drill fire every single day. And they're teaching kids how to make bow drill fires all the time. So they really know their stuff. So from a beginner's perspective, this is my advice. Get the right materials. Stack the deck in your favor and have success right from the beginning. Then you won't have that big period of time where you just don't even try again because it's really frustrating when you fail. Both of my wilderness therapy friends recommended juniper and sage. And it didn't seem to matter whether it was green or whether it was dead and dry. In fact, the sage, you pretty much have to get green because when it dries out, it's just splinters far too much and it's very difficult to work with. You can see I have three different spindles here. These are all sage, but you can see this one's a little bit larger diameter. What I learned about spindles is, is that you wanna cut them a little bit long so they last longer and you want to get a little bit of a bigger diameter. You don't want to get finger size or smaller, you want to get thumb size or bigger. Now you don't want to go too big or your spindle will turn too slowly. The diameter of your spindle is like gearing. If it's too small, it's like a very small cog on the back of your motorcycle. It's probably not going to have enough power to go down the road. So you just have to give yourself a little bit of gearing advantage by having a slightly larger diameter spindle. That'll keep it moving even if it starts to get sticky and wants to jam up. I like a nice stiff bow that has most of its arch right at the handle. These were my first two. This is my final design. The reason I like a lot of arch right here is because you want to be able to reach out and tighten your line. Now if you have a lot of flex in your bow or in your string, you'll pull this all the way till it's touching and it still won't be tight enough. So I like to have a very stiff bow with good arch, but most of the arch right here at your handle. These are all the things that I've tried to use as line a very large size bank line and this actually works very well okay uh, this is a piece of leather and what I found with the leather this is this is the actual uh, square old old-fashioned style boot lace so pretty decent sized piece of leather but what it did is it really stretched out and then it flattened out and when it's flat going around the spindle it wants to run over itself um, and then it kind of catches and grabs uh, and it's not quite as smooth as you'd like it to be. Now this line uh, is kind of soft when you squeeze it and it stretches a lot. I could never get the tension right on this line. I was very disappointed with that. Uh, my very first attempt was with a smaller sized bank line um, but I put a bunch of them together and, and twisted it up and and this worked, you know, relatively well too, uh, but also when it's running over itself, um, the lines have a tendency to kind of catch a little bit. So what I kind of learned from the way they catch on each other is that it's good to have a nice, hard, round line. And I actually found this, it was packaged generically, so I don't, I can't tell you exactly what it is, um, but it's very hard and it uh, and it doesn't stretch okay so very very little stretch so I like it by far the most so this is very very good a very very good choice hard round I think it's three millimeter um, and a very little stretch okay now paracord I haven't tried yet I think I'm sure it would work well 
um, but it does flatten out a little bit so it might have a tendency to run over itself on the spindle um, so I don't know how much it would catch it would probably be fine uh, it has very little stretch so I would say it's a, a pretty good choice here we have my hearth board now there are the two styles the cut on the edges style and then the go from one hole to the next hole to the next hole style so in this style uh, you actually develop the coal in the previous hole and uh, I really kind of like this because you don't have to have a second piece of material to hold your coal um, and it is kind of protected down in this little hole and it's it's worked very well for me so far um, I have tried the notch and it worked well too you know no complaints I think both ways work just fine a big frustration for me was the bearing block because what was happening all too often is because this is an uneven surface I couldn't really tell you know the angle that this was at and um, my spindle kept popping out and so it was very frustrating um, so stack the deck in your favor and just make yourself something either with a little copper insert uh, you know that you can get the little plumbing fitting and uh, just make yourself something or buy something um, that's gonna be positive now using this bearing like this makes it so I can just create a shouldered tip on my spindle and it actually just locks in there so there's no way that's gonna pop out or slide out so this is a great way to go when you're learning because like I say it's just really important to have success because when you have success it's so much fun you just want to do it again and again and again and that's how you get good at it so once you get really good at it you can do you can get away with improvising a lot and you can even use you know like a camping cup and then you just run your spindle up into the corner of that and uh, you can you can get away with all kinds of things once you kinda have all the mechanics and the muscle memory and all that figured out but when you're first starting out make it easy on yourself and stack the deck let's talk about the nest so once you have a coal now you need to blow it into fire and you need a nest to do that so what I'm using is juniper bark it's the most common thing here for me and it works extremely well um, but I just like to take some of this loose stuff and whatever the material you find you just need to make sure that when you grind it up it will grind all the way to dust now you need something to catch the dust and re you can really use anything I mean you could catch dust into your cup you could catch dust on any stuff sack um, you know I've taken off my shoe and you know my sandal and used my sandal so here we have a leather case for the firebox so I'm just gonna catch the dust in this okay so just wrap some longer material kind of around itself and then twist it around and that will give you something that will kind of hold the structure of your nest then you start making the dust now just really want to I mean be thinking dust absolute dust so if it's too windy you're gonna need to get behind something so that this doesn't all blow away I'm just gonna hold my hands down low so that it'll stick around a little better this wind will actually work in your favor as we get a little further along on this you want to just really grind this into a fine fine dust so you're creating basically three stages you know you have your coarse material your fine material and your dust so you kind of just collect this fine material and keep it separated from the dust and just keep grinding until you get quite a bit of this stuff the more dust you have the bigger you'll be able to make the coal that's inside of your nest so you start with a really small coal that you develop with your bow drill and then you blow that into a second coal which is the one that's in your nest 
and then that coal is big enough that it can develop enough heat to ignite your fine materials. Okay, so there we have plenty of fine material. So you go ahead and just kind of sift that around so the dust will fall out of it onto your dust pile. Okay, and then put that into your structure. And then you want to transition your dust into your nest. So you want to just kind of push it all together. And this is just going to kind of automatically sift and your dust is going to end up on the bottom. So that works into your favor here because then you can set your nest on top and when you turn it over then you can see how that's just dust on that top surface. Now the more you mess with this the more that dust is going to filter down in. So I'm just going to try to push it together and create a little bit of a pocket without jiggling it around too much. Cut that notch a little bit wider. So now you can see that notch is quite a bit bigger. So my bow drill set is really easy. I just hook that over the end of that and uh, it just has a single notch in the back holding the line in the back. And I've learned you come up from the bottom on the inside, around the outside. That puts your spindle on the outside of your bow, not on the inside of your bow. And then you're ready to go to work. Go ahead and put your foot right down there so you have as much control as possible and uh, I've got my bearing block here absolutely positive set up there and you just start bowing nice straight strokes and as much pressure as you can handle you can see I'm not tightening up my bow yet see if I'm in frame. Okay, starting to see some smoke. I'm going to push a little harder, go a little faster. Okay, we definitely have a coal. No big rush. I've got so much dust material in there that this coal could really burn a long time. Plus I have more dust around the edges so I could actually feed it fuel. Anyway, that's just the breeze doing that. And look at that baby burn. I could almost start this hearth board on fire with that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and kick it into that dust. Just trying to line it up and drop it in there. And then just be very gentle to not blow your coal away. You can kind of squeeze the material around it to basically hold it. So now your coal will transfer into that dust that you ground up.
until you have fire. Good fun, good times. And once you have success, you'll want to do it again and again and again because it is a lot of fun. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope this helps. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.